All right, this is calculus notes, section 3.1. And what we want to do in this section is find the absolute extrema. And so that's the overall maximum or overall minimum on an interval. So what we want to be able to do also in this section is that we want to find something that we call critical values. Critical values are found when f prime of x is equal to 0 or f prime of x is undefined. From that, then we can find relative mins and maxes, and then we can compare them and see which ones overall would be the absolute maxes and min minimums based on these relatives and also the endpoints. And don't forget the endpoints. So I've written that here now. Endpoint y values. See which one's the biggest, see which one's the littlest. Okay, so the absolute min can. Uh, occurs at the sharp points. Well, so I'm looking at this one right here. So if I look at this, the absolute minimum does occur at that sharp point. That means that f prime of x was undefined. And if f prime of x is undefined, we do have that sharp point. And so that's a possibility that will give us an absolute max or absolute min. Now, if we look at the absolute maximum, well, if I compare this relative maximum with this y value of this endpoint, well, this one's going to be the relative, I'm sorry, the absolute max. It's not a relative max, because it has to be on both sides, but it is the absolute max because it is the highest y value. Where does that occur? Well, it occurs at an endpoint. And so this is the absolute minimum here, okay? So it's going to be your lowest value altogether. Now, if I have kind of the same picture, except for now I have this, what happens here? Well, here, and pretend these values are lower than this one here, this one does not have an absolute minimum. Now, you might ask, well, why is that? It's got pretty low values. Well, for any value that you can give me here, I can find one that's lower. And I can find one that's lower and I can find one that's lower than that. So it, it approaches this, this y value here, but it never actually hits it. So whatever value I say that I have on the curve, you can find one that's lower. So we can never pinpoint this, so it does not have an absolute minimum. And then once again, this would be the absolute max. What if I have a situation where I have vertical asymptotes? Can you ever measure the absolute maximum? And same thing, if I give you a value or if I find a value on the curve, I bet you I can find one higher. So this one would have no absolute max on this. It might have an absolute minimum depending upon how these behave, but if this just approaches the axes here, it won't have an absolute mi minimum either because any value I find, I can find one lower. Okay, so you can never lock it in. Now if I have my last example here, uh, if I do something similar, what if I have a graph that looks like this, where my endpoint value is right there? Well, what happens is that f prime of 0 would be right there. f prime undefined would be right there. Are those the absolute maxes and mins, however? Well, if you look at this, this one right here would be your absolute max. It occurs at the endpoint. And then this one here would be your absolute min occurs at the end point. And so even though these are what we call critical values, this one right here and this one right here, the x values, the y values don't end up being the absolute max or absolute min for each one of those. They occur at the end points. So I guess the point of this is this, is that if we have a critical value where f prime of x is equal to 0 or undefined, it might be a possible absolute max or min. But then you also have to compare it with the end point y values to see if it is or not. Okay, here's some more examples that we can run through quickly. Uh, this is an absolute min, that's the absolute max. That occurs at the end point, that occurs at a critical value. This one's critical value, not a maximum because it's a whole. I can get close there, but for any value I can even get closer. I'll never be able to lock it in. This one's not a, an absolute minimum because it has a whole once again, and then this one would be the absolute maximum. Okay. So that's just some more examples. So relative max and min. So now I'm using the word relative. So we're going to find all these possibilities by looking at when f prime of x is equal to 0 or f prime of x is undefined. 
possible sharp point. Could be some other things too. Okay, so we want to find the absolute max or min. You must do the following. Find the critical values. That's step number one. And so critical values or critical number would be f prime of c is equal to zero. Or if f is not differentiable at c, then c is a critical number of f. So right here, this would be a critical value because it is a sharp point. That means that f prime of c does not exist. And then this would be another one where we'd have a horizontal tangent. And obviously, if we have one like this, this would also be a critical value c there. Okay. Then to find the absolute max or min, we have to evaluate f at each critical value, evaluate f at each endpoint. Remember, we have to compare these and then identify the least. That would be the absolute minimum and identify the greatest, that would be the absolute maximum. I like to do all this in a t-chart. You also can use your calculator table to help figure this out. Table works great. Okay, so find the absolute extrema of this function on the closed interval from negative 1 to 3. So first of all, we find the critical values. This one won't have any undefined because it's a nice polynomial, f prime of x is equal to 12x to the third minus 36x, which is equal to, now we've set it equal to zero. 12x cubed minus 36x, pull out a 12x, so I get x squared minus three is equal to zero. So I have my following critical values. x is equal to zero and plus or minus square root of three. Now, negative square root of three, I believe is outside that interval, and so we'll ignore that one. So when we set up a, our t table, no, I, I don't want a t, I want an x, sorry. x, f of x. When we set this up, so we set up x, f of x, and then I'm gonna put my lowest value and my highest value. Those are my endpoints. And then in between, I can put my critical values. So I have zero and I have square root of three. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug those in, not into f prime, but we're going to plug it into f. And so if I take negative 1 and plug it into here, so here's my t-chart. If I take negative 1, I plug it in, I get negative 15. And I remember I'm plugging into f, not f prime, 0, 0, square root of 3, negative 27, and 381. So if I look at these values, this is my biggest y value. So this would be my absolute max. And then if I look at my absolute minimum, negative 27, negative 15, it looks like negative 27 is the winner. So this one would be my absolute min. Now you should summarize this and say that your absolute max occurs at, okay, so what is my x value that it occurs at? Is x equal to 3 and is 81. Now, if I have multiple 81 values, it would occur at different places, but there would only be one absolute maximum value. My absolute min occurs at, my absolute minimum occurs, where is it? Negative 27. So it's x equals square root of 3 and is, what is my lowest value? Negative 27. So you can summarize this in that way. All right, I got two other examples on there. Why don't you go ahead and try those? I'm just going to flash the answers that I have. Well, let me pause for one second. Let me show you how to do this on the calculator. Uh, here's my graph. And yeah, you can look and do maxes and mins, but we got to apply the calculus here. So what we want to do is, first of all, fix the window. So here's my window settings, negative 1 to 3, because that's my x values that I'm looking for. My y min goes down to negative 27, so maybe I'll go down to negative 30. Y max goes up to 81, I'm going to go up to 85, and voila, there's my picture. And then what I can do also is I can do a table, so I can insert a table here, split screen table. And so then I can uh, ask for the values here. So with this, what I want to do is, I want to go to the menu when I have that table thing going on, and here's my table, edit table settings, and I want to put in an ask here. And so then I can plug in the different values that I want. So I can do my table as I just did it. And so I start at negative one, and then I add zero, 
Then I had square root of 3. And then my last value was 3. And there's my table of values too. Okay, so you can use your table on your calculator to set these things up and get all those values off. And I'll go ahead and show those last few solutions after you've tried them yourself. Okay, hopefully you've tried this one with f prime being this. Now when you find your critical values, you're going to say straight away, oh, I get 1 because I set the derivative equal to 0. Well, what you're neglecting though is that this is division by x to the 1 third. So that would be undefined then at x equal to 0. So remember that we have to find both the times that the derivative is 0 and when it's undefined. So if we put this into a t chart then, negative 1 and 3 are the endpoints, and 0 and 1 are my critical values. This would be my lowest value here, so the absolute min. And then my absolute max, ironically, is 0. Here's the derivative values, and so I'm going to get undefined and 0. So if you're getting a bunch of zeros for your values, you got to be careful. And then there's my graph. Okay, then number three, zero to two, which critical values are we going to get? You have to be able to solve this one with trig. And remember that you have to uh, eliminate this other uh, solutions to make sure that you're in the correct interval from zero to two. Set up your t-chart and you can check your answer there. Uh, the next one we'll do in class. All right, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this.